Hi, hello, welcome. Welcome to my floss tube channel. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Art of Design, where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new, welcome. And if you are returning, I'm so happy you came back to talk all about counted cross stitch with me. I am so happy to be here. It is Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. I literally finished working all day and was like, I have to do a floss tube video. It has to happen because I have been absent for like three weeks, y'all. And I'm so sorry for that, but I have been market prepping for the 2022 Nashville needlework market. So I want to, I'll talk about that later, but I just wanted to pop in. I had a couple questions about my stitching stuff and I thought I would hop on the whip parade bandwagon so that's what we're gonna do. So this video will be dedicated to showing you my WHIPs, um, which stands for Work in Progress. So <laughs> these are the stitches that I can show you that are not my designs, they're other people's designs that I am working on. And then I had an amazing viewer question. Someone asked me about my 2019 book that I published and asked if I would go through and show all of the projects that are in the book. So this is the book. This came out in 2019. It is Stitching Love and Kindness, 14 uh, needlework projects for um, cross stitch, punch needle and embroidery and sewing for Valentine's Day and beyond. I am a huge Valentine's Day fan. I believe in self love, you know, love everyone, <laughs> infinite love. There's, there's no shortage of love, love abounds. So I, I love it. So that's what my first big book was about love and all that cutesy wootsy stuff. So I will show you the projects out of there. And then my whip parade and we'll see how far we go. So my kids have been using this library area. So I got my uh, my friend here, and then I also have some uh, viewer audiences. I got a shark and um, the unicorn here waiting to hear what I have to say all about cross stitch. My bookshelf is literally full, and then I've started stacking more books up this way. So I have moved horizontally, and now I'm starting to go vertically. So <laughs> I have to figure all of that out. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to do a viewer question first, uh, and then I'll do Whip Parade. So yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here. It's weird being in my library again because literally I had to move all my kids stuff out of the way just to just to come chat with all of you. Okay, so here is the book. I arranged this. It's about 40 pages and I have an adaptation sampler based based on this historic sampler here. I had this in my collection. I did not pull it out. I actually have it rolled up in um, acid-free tissue paper and put away, but this is the love and virtue sampler. So I have this charted in here. So that's the only thing you're not going to see like actually on camera. So we will start with, I'm hoping, I hoping I have every, I, I'm hoping I grabbed everything to show you. Okay. First is, it's a little punch needle project. I have out uh, year round, I use some wood rounds and it's like the little lady, little love gnome. So this is a project in the book. It says punch needle using your ultra punch. And then I do directions on everything in there. I have this in my little basket here with some hearts that my woodworking friend made me. So that stays out year round. I also have in here, I did not take it out of the case here because I've got a bunch of other goodies. So this is another project in the book, uh, Bunches of Love. And I have this displayed in the book. It's actually magnet. You magnetize it right onto a cheese grater. So I have um, like vintage metal stand-up cheese graters or the ones that you can like actually hang up on the wall. Let me see if I can show. So this is the table of contents here. It's on a metal cheese grater. All right. Oh, I've, I've shown this before, but I had some questions. So I 
I got gifted most of the, these things. It's you I like. Um, this is my little atomic carrot and stuff, but these are um, some gifts that I've received that I've put behind glass to keep safe. Those are my punch needle cow earrings I made, and I have a video on punch needle um, in my collection here because who doesn't need punch needle cow print earrings? I mean, hello. They weren't mounted in there so well. I put them on right now just to show you. But so those are uh, bunches of love and that's on like a, a darker colored fabric. I have my models in this, these boxes. So I have, I purchased a collection or a collection. I purchased a set of six of these comic book boxes for uh, holding patterns in storage. These are perfect for your six by nine inch patterns, those half full, the, the patterns that are half folded. I uh, use them for pattern storage, but I also use them to hold my models because they I have a shelf system set up where they fit in really well. I covered up the comic book logo with my own stuff. So I use my, sh like a shipping label, the printer, the shipping labels were half and half. And so I have everything labeled. So I am, um, if that helps, I have, I, I will put a link below to these comic book boxes. I also have the storage boxes for the six by nine patterns. They're not as long. This is actually pretty long, but ones that are a little bit shorter in length that I got off of Annie's catalog. Uh, both of them work a great again for the six by nine patterns. They are not archival safe. So these are tech, these are really meant for more paper, um, like the comic books, not for textiles, long-term textile storage. So I, I do know that I am not doing this 100% correct. Okay, but without further ado, let me show you what I got in here. These have been uh, gone out to a couple of shows. I did the holiday um, market bazaar for the Loudoun Sampler Guild in December. And then October, I did the Needlework Emporium. So those are two shows. And I never done a show like shows before ever. So these I had ready and transported. So in, in my book, Stitching Love and Kindness, I also show you how to make this needle book. This is a custom fabric that I had printed that I, I designed and had printed. It says needle book with love and this is how it's charted uh, love on that sampler. I have, uh, I had it printed on a combination of, it's a linen and cotton blend. So it's not the traditional just petal cotton like quilters cotton. It's, it's like the $28 a yard Anyway, I'll show you the other project. So uh, it's got the red lady dot creates ribbon and then you use the wools inside. I think these are Weeks Dye Works wools that I used for them. But again, all the directions are in there. Oh, what's here? Oh, this is not, this is not in the book because it's Halloween, but here's one of my little frightfully sweet bouquet that I did. This is with sulky threads and it's on a piece of gunmetal gray, and that's sulky, uh, one strand of sulky throughout. So there. Okay, so the next little thing I have, and this is in the book, and this is a motif from a historic sampler that is in the public domain, and it's housed at the Cleveland Museum of Art. Cleveland, yeah. All the information, again, is in the book. I stitched this uh, one over one on 32 count linen you don't need to stitch one over one on black fabric but i really wanted it to fit on one of these cute little uh, wood things these are from a uh, not forgotten farm uh lori brecklin she is a virginia based artist i have not met her in real life but i used uh, some of her wood stuff uh, for a couple of the finishes and then this is the other little punch needle it's on the back of another one and this is also in the book with the directions and thread list. I wrap everything with acid-free tissue paper. I will have the link for that below. 
I do, uh, I do make sure that this is acid-free tissue paper and it is pricier. So when it, when you're buying like shipping or gift wrap tissue paper, that's not the same thing. So I just make, making that clear. I'm going to have my assistant over here. I don't know if you, can you hold that for me, bud? Thank you. Oh, this is not in the book. This is one of my first little patterns I ever designed is uh, Noelle. I swear, I thought I had all of the Valentine's Day together. Ah, okay. Oh, this is from Stephanie Webb. She stitched uh, the my guinea fowl design. Okay. <laughs> okay, where, where, are we, where are we here? Okay, uh, this is the other needle uh, needlework project that is in the book. And it says, love you. And I mounted it on just one of those $1.50 wood mounted ornaments, which is so cute, so cute. The next project is get, it's in two pieces. So this is from Not Forgotten Farm and it's like her wooden uh, display thingy. And then this here, boop. And this is my bouquet. It's in the book. And I did this all in knots, but it's charted for cross stitch. And one of um, um, Pennsylvania Floss Two viewer friends, uh, she actually stitched this up in full cross stitch. So it is charted in full cross stitch. So it's, I love this. I, and I, I love it. So here in this hangs. It's tough because I really want to display all of this right now, but I also need to like take it down to <laughs> Mount Erie Commons where I have my stuff displayed. Okay. The next thing here, it's stitched on a, it's on in the book, um, a piece of 18 count fiddler's cloth, Ada. And it's like for like, you could put little love notes in it. And it's, it's a variegated DMC thread that this is. All right, the next is, because I love pugs, pug lover. I have two little baby pugs. I had to stitch a love pug, pugs and kisses. So this is stitched on an 18 count Ada. It will look cute on anything. It's a little cutie. The next is, Sealed with a kiss. <laughs> now, I designed this pre-March of 2020. So it's, and then I put it, it's got a little magnet. I, I put a magnet on the back. And then this is a coin, a vintage coin that the thingy fell out. But it's a, a vintage uh, coin thing. It's so cute. I can see the thing broke, but, and then, uh, so I can display like this sealed with a kiss and then I can put little like miniatures here and then display it. It's so cute, but you know, anything metal. Oh, so I was at the mall of wall, the, the Mart of wall. Yeah. Today. Cause I had to work and like run a bunch of errands and they had the little metal mailboxes, the cute little so cute you know for you to put your little valentines in oh my gosh I wanted all of them so I didn't walk down the aisle at all because I knew I'd buy them so... anyway you know you could stitch this and then like put it on one of the little mailboxes it'd be so dang cute I want to put this out right now I can't help it okay I think my slot might fall and I knocked over a sampler okay the next little piece to show you is this is my adaptation sampler so it's based on the historic sampler that i showed you i stitched this it's uh ch it's charted all in uh, stitched in dmc and the fabric is from luminous fiber arts misty purcell she makes beautiful fabric so this is the love kindness and empathy sampler I learned some valuable lessons uh, 
designing and stitching this piece, I used a DMZ var DMC variegated floss around the border, which I then watched Kitten Stitcher. So this was a couple years ago, like mid 2019. And she made a comment that you should never do borders and variegated floss because it creates the illusion that your line isn't straight. Like it looks wonky because of the color variation. <sighs> but I'd already model stitched and had my book manuscript. So I would suggest, even though it is charted to do and variegated, if you wanna make it so it doesn't look like wonky to do a solid <laughs> line. So look, all the things you learn. But I love this sampler and I think now more than ever, love, kindness, and empathy. So yeah, and I've seen um, a couple um, people stitch this and tag me on Instagram and that's been amazing. I'm seeing if there's anything else. I've kind of lost track of everything. This is my count the pins. I think I think I showed you all the projects. No, no, I didn't. I know I have the the other needle book thing, but I don't know if it's in here. Oh man, I'm sorry, everyone. I thought I had everything. I hope that, but I hope that gives a good. Uh, a good representation of the book so you get the the antique the whole the charted antique i as char as I, I i did not stitch the antique sampler but i charted it so you see the the i charted it based on the colors on the sampler so you get that full chart plus my adaptation of it does that make sense i hope that makes sense ah okay i'm just so excited to talk to all of you and i'm jumbling my words. So again, that is in the love, kindness, and empathy. And I will rewrap all of these little goodies later. So thank you all so much for listening to this. Oh yeah. So I didn't show you there's tidbits of affection. Like, so you mount that on a, like a trinket box. Like, so the little the little odds and ends maybe that you've gotten like little love like love tokens like the tokens of affection like little tidbits american colloquial or lexicon is you know <laughs> tidbits doodads i you know doodads of affection didn't it, I, 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 english language anywho <laughs> there we go all right should we do whip parade i think we should yes let me try to move some stuff. Oh, before Whip Parade, I do want to show you I got a recent acquisition. I got this at a thrift store. My son picked it out and I said, are you sure? Because it is big. And he said, yes, mommy, I want it for my room. And I can't say no to him. Well, I say no a lot. But when your son wants, when your four-year-old son wants cross-stitch, I didn't want to say no. Like, I, anytime he visually sees cross-stitch and says, I want that, I want to be like, yes, sir, you do. He picked out a Lego set today at the Mart of Wall. $40 for the Lego set. And it wasn't even this, it's the expansion pack thing. So it's not even the full now I don't feel so bad about buying the linen fat cloth to, to, to stitch my stuff with $40 for one little tiny expansion pack. But good news is, is we already started the Legos, but there's, there's no, there's no paper directions in the Lego box anymore. You have to scan in your QR code, like that's in the box. And then you have to download the app and then the app has the electronic directions. So if you want your children to get off their devices and build something, it's counterintuitive that they have to be on their device to build something. So, but that's my, okay, Woo! let it go, shake it off. Shake, shake, shake it off. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna stop complaining. This is in no particular order. I will show you just really, so this is my one little display not even display bag. This is my little thing that I stitched. These have my immediate cross stitch projects in them. I got this vintage, it's like a Zodiac magazine thing. I was gifted this a couple years ago and I love it. So that holds my immediate projects. 
that I'm working on right now. Oh my gosh, I like piles here. Oh my goodness. And then my second whip thing is this basket. I think I got it at TJ Maxx and it's like the map, it's, it's the metropolitan, like the map with the river Thames of London, which I absolutely love. Then there's like Canary Wharf, St. Paul's, London Bridge, and it's got the plastic cutouts on it. This is so cool. So I lived in London. I studied abroad in college. It was amazing. I, it was amazing. So I like to have a couple little like London reminders. So I have this in like a iPad or like laptop bag. This is a project that I purchased off of eBay. It was an abandoned project, like somebody else's work in progress. I bought it. Um, I had the magazine already, so it didn't come with the chart. It was just the started project. And I have only put in a couple rows of the greenery. So it came to me. It was dirty and it sucked because the listing didn't say it was dirty, but I, so I washed it. It's like a 28 count linen, but it's really, um, see-through. I got most of the staining out. I added all the purple. There was like one row of purple that I've added, but this is somebody else's whip. Um, they left a lot of stray threads, so I still need to go through and do that. I, I need, I actually... What's kept me from working on this project more, I love this project. It's in, it's the Gathering Honey. I know so many people have stitched this over the years. It's in this back issue of the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. It's also in like the Best Of book. I know that book can be pricey. Um, the reason I haven't stitched more on it is literally that's the only DMC that I had but now I really do need to fully kit it up and finish this because I love this piece. Uh, again, you. some people say they finish a project, they like work on a project and they're like, I don't wanna work on it anymore. I'm just gonna throw it away. I'm just throwing it in the trash. I'm so sick of it. Don't throw it in the trash. Like you could potentially list it on like a, the one of the Facebook cross stitch groups or on the secondary market like Etsy or eBay and sell it. Like if you want it out of your house and not in a landfill, maybe someone will want to adopt your project. So just keep that in mind. The next little project I'm working on is the sloth. It's a Hol Halloween sloth from Just Cross Stitch 2021. And I didn't grab the magazine to show you. Oh man. Um, it's Lazy Witch by, uh, Ryan Mack of Wild Buyer, like Cross Stitch. Oh my gosh, that's a horrible picture, but it's a sloth hanging and she's wearing a witch hat. So I just grabbed a piece and then I, pro there's an arm and I, I already made a counting error. So I don't know. Do I even count that as a whip? Or do I count that as a, oh man, and start again. The next one is a, another project that I got. It was an abandoned project on eBay. This is the Needle Love stocking stuffers. And I got a couple more of these done. They're by no means finished though. Let me pull it out and show you a little better. So these came with the, the floss and a couple of them finished. I grabbed and I've worked, I've got like most of that cow done. I've got, oh, the sheep and I've got a lot of that done. The little ornament kick. I, I started, what, 2019? Okay, so these were my... I've got to work on this more. 2019, I was all about the little miniature stockings. I had gone to the Stitching Post in uh, Catonsville, Maryland, Baltimore, uh, Maryland, and saw in real life all of the Blackbird designs, little stockings, the all the ha Halloween stockings and stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I was on a stocking kit. Oh, really fast before I forget my issue of needlework retailer came in the mail. This is an exclusive uh, trade magazine for people who um, sell cross stitch needlework supplies like online needle workshops. It's for the trade if that makes sense. I do have my official website uh, artistdesign.com and when Megan of needlework retailer asked if I had an online presence I said yes 
and she signed me up to receive this magazine, which is awesome. So I'm going through this magazine, dun, 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 2022 Nashville Needlework Market list of people exhibiting at Nashville. And look at that, <gasps> Ardith Design. Uh -uh. Yes, so I will be there March 4th through 6th. I, the reason I haven't filmed for the last couple weeks is I've literally, literally been working on my new book. Yes. So I sent the manuscript off last night for editing. Like I relinquished control and sent it off to be edited. It's weird. It, it's, it, when you work on such a big project and then you like stop for a little bit. Oh, it's weird. Okay. This is, oh, so yeah, I have a book coming out. So if you want to pre-order with like your local needle workshop or something, like pre-order the book, that would be awesome. Okay. <laughs> this is a drawn thread. This is the violet sampler. I purchased it on eBay. It came with all of the silks and it came with the fabric. And I started this and I literally have not worked on it since I showed you last. I only did one strand of the silk and I didn't like the coverage. So I'm going back and finishing and, and doing that second strand. So this was my first time ever uh, trying to work with silk. So it is a learning experience. You do need to be mindful that there are a lot of different types of silks out there. There are six stranded silks, two ply, one ply stranded, some are thicker, some are thinner. So not all silks are created equal. I know like the belt there, the, the hundred and threes, which I've never tried before, but they, um, they're supposed to be a lot thinner. So just, you know, not, not everything's created equal. Okay. I, yes, I grabbed some of these to show. Okay. This, uh, Barbara Lavalli, she is an Alaskan artist. This is the hug. I got this from the Quilted Raven. They carry the charts. So if you're interested in that. So I got a good start on that and I need to work on this more. I'm not using all the called for threads from the kit and I put them all on thread drops. But not really thread drops because it was late at night and I couldn't move because my kids and all that stuff, waiting for them to go to bed like fall asleep next to me. Um, so I just grabbed these and put a hole in. I know I didn't wind them up. I, so those are the called for, and this is how far I got. So I've got her face and then the start of the doll here. And it's so beautiful and I love it. I, I have to work on this again. It's called, uh, hugs, not the kiss. It's called hugs. I said it wrong. And I, one of you had sent me a couple years ago, the picking berries. So I need to get started on that. All the things. All right. The next piece I have is a uh, strawberry fields forever. I made a counting error in the fence and put it away. And then I got it back out and started working on the border again. And I'm glad I did. And I'm doing this all in the called for, except I, this is a 37 count linen. And this is the first time I've ever worked on a 37 count. I've worked on a tight 36 from Picture This Plus. When I say tight 36, it like stitched like a 38 count or a 40 count, not as a, so that's why I say that because the, so it was the fiber is so dense, but this is um, where I am. I said I made a mistake here, but I decided to carry on and it's going to be a cute little tiny little thing when it's done. And I'm excited because I love strawberries. I love them. So we've got that. I have in this like <laughs> makeup bag, use what you got. Um, this was another blackbird. I had done the fairy garden. I didn't even start on the second one. Oh my gosh. I could have sworn I started and I didn't. Oh, I have it in here. I have all the threads. Okay, that's embarrassing. Okay, so I was going to do this one next and I haven't even started it. But hey, look, I got fairy garden. <laughs> I 
I have been doing model stitching so much that I my my whips have been languishing. I am a process stitcher though. Like I don't really care about them being done. I, I enjoy the the act of stitching. To st for the joy of stitching, not for the joy of a finish. I mean, finishes are nice, but not required. All right, this is the Marie La Twinette. This is by Peacock and Fig. Dana, she is a Canadian uh, cross-stitch designer, and she's also a, um, she's doing a lot of stuff on Spoonflower. Her wallpaper stuff is really cool. Um, she's doing a lot of stuff. Anyway, I love this. I need to move down. I was doing the back stitching and all here. This has a pretty cool floral thing here, but a part of me is like, should I just finish her here and put her like in an oval frame as like a portrait oh, rather than all of this? So I haven't figured that out yet. This is all in the called for DMC. It's a really fun palette. And that came out, it was a, like a four part. There was four different birds and all like wearing like bouffants or like weird thing. Not weird. I love, I love things that are. Uh, what's the right word? Interesting period costume things. Okay. This is the Cricut collection. This is a pattern that my husband picked out when the first time ever we went to a local needlework shop. This is when I went into Ann's shop down in Virginia Beach, nine to stitch. And I am stitching this all with Sulky. And I have the big and little <laughs> uh, spools of stuff. This is on a piece of cauldron and oh my gosh i have to work on this it's so fun i would recommend anybody who is like on the fence about stitching um with white on stuff try that sulky one strand of sulky on 30 28 32 count it's bulky at 36 count so but it, it i think it lays really nicely and you don't have to worry about your threads like getting all sorts of I white stitching goes really like I can just like breeze through the white stitching I feel a lot more confident in stitching white with white um, using just the one strand again um, I have a big spool of it because I use it a lot uh, this is like the off white like more accrue and that's the 1071 and then the pure white like the bright white is the 1001 bright white I have a link um, to silky pro silky products if you're interested i have that below too i have not oh my gosh i'm i have not worked on this one for a long time it is oh my gosh it is still on the mounting board from when i showed it to you all last time this is the Here it is, Needles Dance on the called for fabric with the called for flosses. And it was the three artists that put this together. This was an exclusive kit for a time being and my husband purchased it for me because I said, please honey, I really want it. And he said, okay, honey, I love you. So I need to get uh, back to this. I started this when it came out and I need to finish it. A lot of people have made uh, comments about this blue fabric being really thick and stiff like standing at attention. Oh, I stitch in hand, so I like kind of a robust, I don't want to say thick or crunchy because that's those are that has like a negative connotation, but I like when I hold a piece of fabric in my hand where it doesn't just like wilt and dwindle and then like where it gets all kind of, what's that word? Where it gets all, you know when fabric's on a bias and it, and it just whoop, like, when it's thicker, it just kind of hangs out there. I don't know what I am saying. I need to get some sleep too. This is bad. Okay. This is, I stitched this one last year. Um, and this is the whale. I was gifted this chart and this is, um, part of the came in classic 
cross stitch. And it, it were three different charts by uh, Ursula Michaels. Oh, what's the name? I'm so sorry. I'm drawing a blank. But I, I, I've stitched the one and working on the whales. I don't think I'm going to do the eagle. Here it is, the Northwest series. So I did a bear lives here and I'm working on the whale one now. And it is a piece of um, blue fabric, like a blue teal green fabric that was dyed for me by Susan a couple years ago. Yeah, Ursula Michael is the designer. Okay, so Susan had dyed that for me a couple years ago. And I haven't gotten very far. I'm just using the DMCs. And it's 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 really pretty. It's got a... And it's, it's really pretty. It's the orcas and that Pacific Northwest indigenous style. The next project is one that I got, I wanna say I purchased this in Durham, North Carolina at the scrap exchange when I went there and I wanted to finish it. It was like almost done. And so I've worked on like the floorboards and stuff and the wall and trying to fill it in. Most of the stitching had already been done. I just going through and trying to finish it. This piece is, uh, it's got staining on it. I, I will never like frame this piece, but I was thinking at least finish it and then maybe put it like on a project bag, like stitch it, like quilt it onto a project bag. So I added like the lines. I did my best because the stitching is also off, not my stitching. So I was just doing my best to get the perspective in. I think I might call it a day now that I really look at it. I mean, I got a lot of the floorboard. It looks like right here I need to do that floorboard stuff. Yeah, I think I just need to finish the floorboard in front of her dress and call it a day. And then maybe have this be on like the front of a project bag. I think that's what I should do. I have a lot of Paula Vaughn charts. I know, and I have a couple fully finished framed Paula Vons that I got at the thrift store. I have them actually in my studio. Like I put them up on the wall. Um, I don't think I'll ever personally like start to finish her stuff, but it's, it's lovely and why not? Okay, this is a abandoned project that I got on eBay. It is on the cover of the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts Magazine. I was all into the Move the Merrier stuff for earlier in 2021. I, I did the stuff with the um, Cross Stitch Collective and I was doing cow stuff, so it was all about the cows. So I got this, it was mostly done, and just like filling in like the sky under the udder and doing the back stitch on the faces. I finished, I did the stitching, the finish the around the sampler here and added the back stitching for um, like T is for tail, U is for udder, C is for cow, and then went through and added the face stuff. Again, she had stitched most of the cow. I just went in and filled in like some of the blocks of the of the green and then that pink purple sky. So this is like almost done. Yeah, okay, so I'm doing the back stitching around the bell, the cow bell. More cow bell. So I just need to kind of finish that stuff up and it'll be done. I don't know if I should make this into a project bag or what, but I was utterly obsessed with cows at the beginning of 2021. All right, so that was my first like bucket here. That was my London bucket. I don't realize how many like abandoned little projects I had until I start showing it to you. Like I bought that on eBay, eBay, eBay. You'd be surprised like the random stuff you put in your um, search list and the stuff that you find. I mean, it's just like, what? Okay, the next project that I started, um, it's by Bright Needle. I'm not sure if the chart is still available or not. It is, I feel like every time I say eBay, you take a shot of like coffee or something. Okay, 
I got the chart on line and it is uh, a used chart and it's got a little marking on it. This was older. It's got the original photograph there and it is the Sweet Summer Sampler by Bright Needle. I am using the Anchor Floss conversion. So I bought Anchor Floss. This is my first ever project using Anchor Floss and so far so good. I got pretty good progress here on the sunflower. I love sunflowers. I have another sunflower piece to start. This is on a Joblin. It is Water Lily Joblin even weave and it's a 28 count even weave. And so this is where I'm at. I really like this. I'm using uh, two strands of the anchor, which is a which is just a six stranded cotton floss. And I'm using, doing that conversion. So I've got the leaves. So this comes down and then there's three flowers and then the urn and the rest of the alphabet. So I'm really excited about that. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I haven't worked any more on my Pat Carson dedication piece that I showed a couple weeks ago. Thank you all for your kind uh, words about uh, Pat and um, her passing. I have, I said, uh, I haven't worked really, I haven't finished this at all. Um, so this was uh, designs by Gloria and Pat that I need to finish. I have a model stitch here I can't show you in it, but it's in my bag from Threads and Twined and it's the Gasleys, which are one of my favorite thread lines. I am working on this angel, almost done with her. She was, I um, was gifted an estate of um, stitching supplies and she was in it. My Husky, the same I was last time. I'm just looking at the time going, I cannot believe my kids have let me speak to you all this long. Yeah, I'm looking and seeing if there's anything else I can show you. Oh, I'm doing that Scaredy Cat by Birds of a Feather, but I didn't grab the chart to show you. It is um, in my bag, my little pug bag I got from Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, and, oh, I love all the Birds of a Feather charts. I have not found a Birds of a Feather chart that I did not love. I'm just saying. So those are my whips. That was a really bad parade. I will do better next time. Look at this. Look at this. I'm, I got piles of stuff. So I appreciate you all so much. I am working on my market stuff. I'm going to do my very, very best to come back and talk to all of you in February. I have stuff to release to all of you, but I, as a, I, I, I'm, I'm focused on market right now. So please know that I haven't forgotten about all of you. I love all of you. I did this uh, cute little piece. It's <laughs> like D is for dustpan, like a dustpan quilt, dust bunny, electronic. I, I did, I made a little chart. I, I watch uh, Carol of Saltbox Stitcher. She's uh, my mom's age and I don't know, just, you know, sometimes when you, you just don't, you feel lonely and you just like kind of want like, like, um, like a mom to talk to you. So I put Carol on and so I, I did a little chart. Um, anyway, I have that, um, <laughs> on my website and, um, my book and stuff. So yeah, I, um, I appreciate all of you and I just know I'm working really, really hard for market. This is going to be, oh my goodness. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, this is going to be my first ever market and I don't know what to expect, but I know what to expect. If that makes sense from watching floss tubes, you know, people going in 2019 and 2018 and 2020 and seeing it like from an audience perspective, um, but it's scary. <laughs> I had a lot of work. So I'm hoping you all like, um, my releases. I'm going to, I'm hoping to be back in, um, absolutely mid February. 
uh, to show you all my uh, upcoming releases. That Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Uh, I love you. I hope that you have a beautiful uh, time stitching and I hope that you're doing okay. All right, much love. Mwah. Take care.